Good morning, good afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes, talking about another immigration issue. Only it has nothing to do with England. It has nothing to do with America. It doesn't even have anything to do with Africa. It's got to do with India. Now, why would Black Bright be talking about India? She's never been there. What does she know about it? Well, I was sent an email and I felt I needed to respond. And in order to respond, I needed to look something up. So I decided to read out the email. I'm not going to disclose the name of the person who sent me the email, but read out the email so you can hear his concerns. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because immigration issues are so similar around the world. Um, In the UK, we tend to think that... um, discrimination, bias, um, feeling hard done by, is just in the UK. And until we put ourselves in other people's shoes and, you know, kind of compare our situation with other people around the world, we end up feeling as though, woe is me, we're the only people with the problem. Anyway, this is the email I received. Dear Madam, I was born on 6th of January 1944 in British India, and it was part of the British Empire. Likewise, my parents were too born in the British rule. In 1947, British government declared independence of India. India was divided into two countries, India and Pakistan. My father moved the family to India By 1947, my father had served the railway for 26 years. The government of India recently passed a Bill Citizenship, Citizen Amendment Bill. Let me put a bill in twice. Citizens Amendment Bill is also called the Citizen Amendment Act. As per this bill, I shall have to prove that that I and my parents were born in India, whereas myself and my parents were born when this country, India, did not exist. As such, myself and my parents were born in British rule. In a way, don't you think we were British subjects? The place or city in which I was born is different country now, which is now called Pakistan. There can can be a possibility, is there a possibility that I shall be, there is a possibility that I shall be declared a stateless man. Now the question is, can I request for the British passport and migrate to UK or to the Commonwealth country? Can I request the British government for asylum? The process under the Citizen Amendment Act will commence in April onwards. Please study my case and advise your thoughts as to how I should go about it. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a strange one because... If, I think the country, what he's saying where he was born is Pakistan, but he moved to India in 1947, which is quite a long time ago. But my understanding of the Citizens Amendment Bill is that if you've been in the country, well, if you've been in India um, for how long was it? For five years prior to 31st of December 2014, you can claim for Indian citizenship. So I don't quite get the question. Um, The Citizens Amendment Bill that he's referring to, it has been in force for quite a long time, but it's just gone through Parliament went through Parliament, I think, in December 2019. And so um, 
It provides Indian nationality to six communities of six religions. Now, he doesn't state what religion he is. Um, my feeling, because he has written, um, because, the CA, because the Citizens Advice Bill doesn't apply to Muslims in, in, from these areas, I'm kind of thinking that he may be Muslim. The reason why I'm saying that, okay, um, the citizens' advice provides Indian nationality to six communities of six relig religions, and that is Hindus, Christians, Sikhs, Buddhists, Parsi, and Jains. Now, why it's giving um, nationality? It's almost like an amnesty because these people can is these people can be illegal immigrants already in the country and they can apply for indian um nationality provided they've been living they can prove that they've been living in the country for 5 years prior to 2014 it used to be 12 years and they've reduced it to 5 so these these Hindus, Christians, Sikhs and Buddhists and Parsi and Jains, they can apply because if they've been fleeing from persecution from Pakistan, Afghanistan and Bangladesh. As long as they arrived in India before the 31st of December 2014. Now what this gentleman is saying is that he was born technically in Pakistan, but when it was under British rule, it was one and then they divided it. So now he lives in India. So he can't prove that he was born in India because he wasn't. I see. So he can't prove that he was India. He, he's Indian because he's act technically from Pakistan. And they're protecting people who are fleeing from Pakistan. So maybe that's what his issue is. Anyway, um, this new citizens um, amendment bill, I keep on thinking about CAB because that's how they abbreviate it. And then I think about the Citizens Advice Bureau. It is an attempt to give citizenship or what we would call asylum refugees to asylum refugees. But yeah, because they're fleeing persecution. Um, it, it's for minorities from three countries that are Islamic State or Muslim countries. So what? I, so that's the Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh. So they're oh, I see. So Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh are primarily primarily Islamic and Muslim countries. So these non-Muslims who are fleeing persecution from Afghanistan. Bangladesh and Pakistan, India is giving them asylum. Well, more or less giving them Indian nationality then. So there seems to be some kind of protest because what they're saying is, is that the Citizens Amendment Bill is discriminating against Muslims because Muslims is the only religion that is not included. But I think because they are um, protecting non-Muslims from only those three countries which are primarily Muslims, they wouldn't really be inviting Muslims to become Indian nationals because it would kind of defeat the purpose because it doesn't appear that the muslims in those three countries are being persecuted only the non-muslims that's my kind of understanding so the citizens advice bill amends the citizenship act of 1955 to make illegal immigrants illegal migrants they call them in the select categories eligible for Indian citizenship. So to me, it's like amnesty. They don't have to seek refuge and they don't have to seek illegally to migrate. They don't have to illegally migrate. They can, as long as they fulfill that criteria, they can apply for citizenship. 
Um, what else was there? So what, while they're protesting is that the Constitution does not discrimination on the basis of faith, but they're saying that the Citizens Amendment Bill does discriminate on basis of faith because they're not including the Muslims to become citizens of India. But I guess if you think about it, if you think that they're only allowing those people who are fleeing from persecution, who are essentially asylum seekers, they're only allowing them um, Indian nationality, that wouldn't really be um, discrimination if you look at it from that angle. I don't know if I'm looking at it right. I'm just kind of trying to understand that this gentleman's question and I'm trying to respond to it. So the Citizens Amendment Act, aka the Citizens Amendment Bill, that is what I've just been talking about. Now they have something called the National Register of Citizens. Now this is where I get confused. The National Register of Citizens is a register of all Indian citizens and it was amended in 2003. Okay, so the purpose of the national, I'll call it the NRC, the purpose of the NRC is to document all legal citizens so that illegal migrants can be identified and deported. Now, doesn't that contradict the CRB, the, yeah, the CRB? Because if they're saying that illegal immigrants can now apply for Indian nationality, oh, I guess it doesn't really. Because if they're saying that um, illegal migrants can apply for nationality, Indian nationality, providing they've been in India before 2014. It's only applying to those who come under those particular specific categories. So I'm assuming that anyone else would fall under the NRC and could be deported and they have to go through this foreign court system. It's quite complicated. So citizenship is proved by submitting documents relating to date of birth, place of birth, and the decision is still out as to what documents qualify, but it's an ADVA card, which is a biometric um, system. It's supposed to be the most high-tech um, biometric system in the world. It's called ADHA, A-A-D-H-A-A-R. Indian passport qualifies, um, overseas passport, and apparently um, if you've got an overseas passport, you actually assume the citizenship of that passport up until that date. Okay, they've got electoral, electoral photo identity that's been issued by the Election Commission of India, overseas citizenship Indian document. Um, a person of India orange, origin card, permanent account number for income tax, driving license, ration card, identity certificate for non-citizens or stateless persons, birth certificate, all that kind of stuff. So um, that's what they expect you to have if to prove your nationality. And I think what this gentleman is saying is that he can't prove his nationality because when he was born, it was actually under British rule. So what he's saying, since it was under British rule when he was born, can he claim asylum in, in England? But um, I don't understand, is he under threat then in India, assuming he is a Muslim? And, and the CRB is catering for non-Muslim. Maybe that is a situation. Maybe that is why he um, is seeking, he's asking the question whether he could seek asylum in the UK. I'm, I'm not an immigration officer. I'm not an immigrant. I have no um, expertise in that field. Um, 
So I don't know what the criteria is. And he was asking about a British passport. I don't think he can get a British passport because, well, like I said, I don't really know. I think if you come here under asylum, but then they're trying to stop asylum seekers. And you'd have to be in the country for so long and you'd have to prove that your country is still in, um, you're still being persecuted by the country that you're in and what evidence have you got that you're being persecuted. And it's not that straightforward, I don't think. So the NRC will include those who can prove that either they or their ancestors lived in India before the 24th of March 1971. I don't understand why he can't just claim that he's Indian. I mean, 1944, if he can prove that he's been in India all those years, how do they know he's born in Pakistan unless he says something? Not unless it's got to do with your own personal integrity. I guess it would have, really, because that's like you're taking on a whole different identity. No, that wouldn't work. Um... So Ardva, like I said, is the world's largest biometric ID system. It is considered proof of residence, but not proof of citizenship. Rule 3 of Schedule 3 of the Citizenship Rules 1956 states that the fact that a citizen of India has obtained on any date a passport from a government of, of any other country shall be conclusive proof of his or her um, citizenship before that date well having voluntarily acquired citizenship of that country i think when they try to palm off shamema begum i think they got confused with india and bangladesh and i think that they thought that Ingl um, india and bangladesh had the same immigration rules under this had had they um no but they still would have they still didn't take on the nationality of the mother. So I still don't see how they thought they could palm her off to Bangladesh. Oh, who knows? Like I said, I, I should study immigration because I really do enjoy it, to be honest. What else have I got here? I think that is all I've really got to say. I, I'm, I know I was waffling on. I hope some of it made sense. Um, I'd appreciate your comments, especially from anybody in India or, or, you know, any subscribers from India. I'd really appreciate whether or not I've interpreted that gentleman's situation um, accurately and whether or not you agree or you disagree. And that's all for now. Bye bye.